Hello friends, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the gas station. This is Monday, May 8th, imagine that, how y'all are, how was your weekend? I had a blast, I mean I got rained out Sunday, but Saturday I got to build one of those sections, I did it live, live streamed from inside the barn. If y'all didn't see that, you need to check out that video. I built one of those floor sections just to see if I could live stream from the barn. I didn't advertise it or say I was going to do it or anything. I just thought I'd try it. And it was a lot of fun. So guess what? I'm going to do it again this coming Saturday. Uh, Gary and I are going to be in there doing the rest of the floor joist sections. So I'm just going to let that thing stream. It might be two or three hours we're working on that stuff, but... And y'all can talk amongst yourselves. I'll pop over now and then and look and see if there's any questions or suggestions, something I might be missing, uh, or something I should be doing that I'm not. But yeah, I'm just going to let it run. I'm going to set it up like I did before. I'll move the camera over when I'm cutting. I'll move it over when I'm nailing. That's pretty cool. I thought that was fun. Then... Because I was out in the barn, I forgot to plug my laptop into the power station. So that pretty much drained the battery. When I, <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Then I set up for my live stream Saturday night. And I had it plugged in to the wall. And I'm just going along, you know, after about an hour and a half. Everything's fine. We're having fun. It's going great. And a thing popped up that my battery was dying. And I looked over, and the cord itself, you know, from the power block to the cord, had come apart. And when I tried to hook that back up, shit froze up, I, you know. So, unfortunately, that was the end of the live stream Saturday night. But you live and learn. I know to check that now, you know, from now on. Uh, but, yeah, it was fun. I uh, pretty much got rained out Sunday. I did uh, one of my review videos Sunday on the 14-inch uh, 40-volt uh, saw. Check that out. That's going live tomorrow at 10 o'clock. My Tuesday review days. And I got another chainsaw to do next Tuesday. Then today I got a, a wireless solar-powered security camera that will go on the barn and reach my Wi-Fi. Um, I don't know what I got a nice 16 inch rechargeable floor fan you know that'll run for like 30 hours on a charge that's going to be fun to have in the barn while we're working I'll be doing a review on that I got a, a new drone coming to do a review on uh, another uh, 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery I got that today uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, this stuff's coming in. And so I'm just going to designate one day a week for just reviews. You can watch them if you want. If you don't, that's okay. I don't try to clickbait anything. I'll tell you exactly what that what that video is about. If you decide to, to click on it and watch it, I thank you very much, and I really appreciate it. But if you don't like it, don't blame it on me because I told you what it was. <laughs> oh, man. Finally starting to warm up, too. I think it's going to be a lot warmer now. I mean, rain. I'm waiting on the rain tonight. I'm here at work again. Um, Wednesday, I have to meet the guy out there from the electric company because I think I figured out a different way to do the electric, and I need to talk to him about it. I'm going to shoot a video of the different ways of getting electric, what i got to go through to get electric to St. Bernard Acres. And what we finally come up with. Um, the last thing we came up with how to do it, it's going to cost me $4,600. But I think if they'll do it the way I'm thinking they can and should, it's probably going to be closer to $2,500. Either way, it's going to cost me money. Uh, and I'll get a chunk of that back once I get the shell built of the house. After October, I'll have a septic in and the shell of a house and a driveway. They'll send most of the money back to me then, that, which would be the cost of putting the septic in. So, that's all right. 
it all works out. And then Alex is putting his house out there in October. He's going to pay to do the well. Now, my well is different than the other guy's well. Because my well, the original well is like 30 feet across the property line. <laughs> so, if they had to move that property line over another 30 feet, I'd have had a well on my property. But, uh, now, uh, according to the records at the county, they found water, the water table is really high. They found water at 28 feet, and they put in a 100-foot casing. That was it. You know, that's all that you need for the water out there. So it should be a fairly inexpensive well to put in. But, yeah, things are happening. I, uh... I'm going to have Nick work for me Thursday night, or Wednesday night, because I'm going to be out there Wednesday afternoon. And then I'll work Thursday, because uh, I need the money. <laughs> you know? I'm trying to get this thing done. I mean, I'm 66 years old. I can't retire, you know, quit work and let YouTube pay my way. <laughs> so I'll keep my part-time job until I get, you know, everything I need for the house. And then once I get the show and everything set up during the winter, I can start working on the inside each week. And next spring, sell my house here, move out there permanently, and take the money from that house to completely finish out the new house. So that's the plan. As long as things stay together. I'm beginning to wonder whether or not they're going to stay together, though. But the... the the way this world and this country is deteriorating on a daily basis, I'm not so sure there's going to be a lot left, folks. Title 42 is ending on the border. That was put in for the pandemic and to keep people from coming into the United States illegally. You got the administration telling you that the board is secure. But with the end of Title 42, you know, my orchid says, okay, we're ready. They're going to send 1,500 troops down there for administrative support. Millions coming across the border. Greg Abbott sent 10,000 National Guard down there and it didn't help. You know, you need to send 100,000 active duty soldiers to that border and stop this from happening. This is an invasion, and you're not only allowing it to happen, you're promoting it. Plain and simple. That's what's going on, folks. They were so eager and so happy to jump on the bandwagon of impeaching Trump. Why the hell does Mayorka still have a job? He has failed in every aspect of his duties. And he still has a job. He's saying, we're ready for it. It's not going to be a problem with Title 42 ends. We're under attack. And we're under attack by countries that are being aided by our own government. Face it. That's what's happening. Kind of shit makes me mad. I swear it does. Speaking of Biden <laughs> and his ineptness, a new poll comes out. It wasn't very good for him. Poll of independent voters. 70% of independent voters believe he is not mentally fit to do the job of President of the United States. S&V. Hey, I'm here till 9 o'clock. That'll work, buddy. I'll be here. Appreciate it. All righty. Bye. Bye. -bye. 
yeah, 70% of independent voters believe he is not mentally competent to perform his duties. So let's think about this for a minute. The Democratic left is going to vote for Biden. Because I think they're as ineptly, <laughs> they're just as inept at doing the job. The GOP is going to vote for whoever the GOP candidate is. The deciding votes are going to be the independent voters. 70% of them believe he's not capable of doing the job. So that would mean about 70% of independent voters would vote GOP. How is Biden going to win again? He's going to win again because he won the first time. This is not going to be a an honest election as far as I'm concerned. He's going to win because they want him to win. End of story. Right. Another mass shooting down in Texas. <coughs> this guy was kicked out of the military with mental problems. I hear. Nothing's been proven yet, but that's the, you know, talk around the water fountain. I am tired of everybody jumping on the, the, the gun control bandwagon every time something like this happens. You have a lot of laws at your disposal disposal and rules to stop this kind of stuff, and you don't use them. You want to say we have to ban everything, but you won't use the tools you have available to you to help curb this. So until you are willing to use the tools you have, don't come after me. I'm not doing it. These are crazy people. These are people who have problems, you know? But don't worry about it. He was Hispanic, you know. You're, you're not going to hear about this. It's going to be in the news very long. Same as all those. A young mother, African American cop in Chicago was killed or ambushed in her front yard. They don't know if this was a targeted attack or random violence. Where are the rioters? Where are the people shutting down the roads? Where's the outcry for this? Where are they at? No, they're waiting on somebody else. The problem with these people who riot for these things, you know, the, the subway the homeless guy that was choked out. You know, it's tragic, but we've reached a point where we don't know what to do. The cops are not there to do their job. They don't want to do their jobs anymore, and I don't blame them. So it's up to us to police ourselves. We are untrained. You know, you want to charge this guy with murder, but you want to talk about how wonderful this homeless dude was who was threatening people. You know, we're already at a, a, a heightened level of uh, fright. So it doesn't take much to scare us over the edge, if you will. You know, they're riding, they're closing down the subways. They're, you know, because this guy's not going to be charged with murder. He is going to be, he has to be charged with murder. He can't get out of jail. Where are these people for this, this black girl, this cop in Chicago? Why no outcry over that? Why is nobody talking about that? You know why? Because the rioters and those people haven't been told to do it yet. They do what they're told to do. They can't think of this on their own. So they are told where to riot, what to riot about, what to say. If they're not told to demonstrate something, they don't do it. They are controlled. If that makes sense. Man, it just drives me up a wall.
All right, I got to go do a full service. All right, I had to stop and have dinner. <laughs> um, something else I wanted to mention about the, the shootings. It's um, another delay in releasing the manifesto from that transgender who shot up in uh, Nashville, shot up the Covenant School. Who wants to see this manifesto and why? Why is it so important that this be released? You know, we, we, I'm telling you, we're developing this macabre sense of, of something when these tragedies happen. I don't care what that manifesto has to say. This was an idiot with mental problems who should have been stopped. Once again, all of the things were in place where this could have been stopped. But it wasn't. So come after mine, because you didn't do your job. That's why I said, I don't care what this manifesto has to say. I don't know why it's important. Why that's so important that it get released. There's nothing in it, I think, that's going to solve any of these problems. All right. Remember I've mentioned a couple of times about digital currency and the dangers we face it going. Phase one is coming in July. If you don't believe me, do some research on this. Quit using Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, Cash App, you know. What's going to happen, it's all going to go through the government now, Fed now, this clearinghouse, if you will, or bank, you know, this program. And they're selling it on the fact, oh, well, you know, uh, things are going to clear faster. It's going to be a faster payment system. But let's say you buy something from Amazon. Your money doesn't go to Amazon now. Your money goes to Fed now. And Fed now sends it to Amazon. Fed now. My wife and I sell money back and forth between our accounts. And my son does. Now, instead of going from Gail's account to my account, it's going to go from Gail's account to Fed now, and then from Fed now to my account. All under the guise it's going to be faster and easier. Number one, we know that's not possible. Because if I do PayPal, I accept PayPal payments, you know, and I use PayPal, it's immediate. How is it going to be faster than immediate? When I sell money to Gale, it's immediate. You know, so don't buy into the fact that it's going to be faster or easier or safer. What it means is the government is going to see everything you spend a dime on. They're going to see it. They want to make the dollar digital. This is phase one. It's starting in July. I've been trying to tell you it's coming. People don't want to believe it. But they're not only going to be able to track and see what you spend your money on and how much you spend of your money. It will lead to the point where they can say no. They will deny you buying something because they don't think you need it. Or they can take your money when they want. And you don't get to sign up for it. It's not an option thing. It's just happening. So I, how you find it, I don't know, but... I'm not doing any more of the cash apps over the phones. Not doing it anymore. Because it's all... I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how we're going to solve it. You know, as long as it's still available, I am going to go back to writing checks and using cash. Now, we still have a few years on that. I mean, we can still do the Zelle. We can still do PayPal. We can still do all those. It's just going through the federal government now. 
and they will start building a database. Now, I know it's not going to affect Joe Waller, you know, immediate in the immediate future. If somebody wants to send me $50 to buy material with for the house, you know, the government's going to know I got it, but they're not going to do it. I mean, what are they going to do about it? I guess they could tax it. I don't know. I love Yoohoo's. It's probably been five years since I had a Yoohoo, and I just decided to go get me a Yoohoo out of the cooler. And they still taste the same as they did 30 years ago. Alright. What else can I bother you folks with? Puppies are doing fine. I was telling y'all how Rex is going through trauma, things he's never gone through before, right? He watched as Bentley left Thursday to get on the truck with Alex. And Gail had Bentley out in the side yard over there, running around, going potty and everything. Rex was in the house watching through a window. That was very traumatic for him. I calmed him down. Everything was fine. Friday morning, he watched Gail and Rosa get in the car and take off without him. They were gone all day and all night because she spent the night with Rosa out in the cabin. Poor Rex. And Friday afternoon, I put him in his crate and went to Lowe's. He's never been put in his crate and then people walk away and nobody be there. So that was a new experience. All this, you know, Friday night, he didn't sleep worth a crap. Gail said, Sat, you know, and then Saturday morning, we get up, I wake Nick up to sit with Rex, and I take off. So this poor dog, you know. Now, I came back yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, and he was, like, really all over me, calmed down, you know. We got all squared away. We went to bed, he slept with me, and he slept all night up against me. I didn't realize how hot dogs were, man. He gets hot. Uh, but yeah, the entire night, he said he would not get up. When I got up this morning, he got up. We went out to go potty. Well, I didn't go out to go potty, but I went potty and then I took him out to go potty. Uh, and all day long, he was just on top of me. Went to Lowe's. Took him to Lowe's. Because they had this sale go and buy one tool, get another tool for free. I need a weed eater. That Troy Belt just... Yeah, I bought that for 30 bucks. I cannot get it started. And I bought it a few years ago. I beat the crap out of it. Same with the Echo. I beat the crap out of those things. The Echo's got the brush cutting blade on it. So I, didn't even, I can't weed eat with that. So I have to get another weed eater. And I thought, you know, a Craftsman, one of those 20 volt Craftsman, yeah, I'll take that. So I went there today to, to get that. I was going to buy a tool and get the weed eater for free. Well, the weed eater is not part of that promotion. So, needless said, and get, you know, my $99 weed eater, I didn't get it. But I just need something to go around the cabin and everything, not to brush hog out there anymore. I just need a regular old string weed eater. Um, but I'll get one. That's it. I'm gonna go to the, I'll go to the pawn shop tomorrow and see what he's got. I bought that Echo off of him. That thing's still going strong. I'll see what I can get off of Mike. Um, what else happened? That's about it. But yeah, Max. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lowe's. Rex was very nervous. He, he's That's all new to him too. He's scared of people. I was, I would kneel down there and somebody would say, can I pet him? It's like, you know, he's six months old. He's very scared. You know, every time somebody would want to pet him, he'd be trying to climb up on me, you know. But he'll get used to it. I mean, that's, and I forgot to take some treats. You know, I'll give somebody one of his treats and say, here, just to hold out your hand, let him have a treat if he wants it. Uh, but I got to get him socialized like that. Taking the St. Bernard's and the Lowe's was a totally different story because everybody backed up. 
and talked about what gorgeous dogs they were, but not a whole lot of people wanted to come up and start petting the St. Bernards. This beagle, everybody wants to pet him. Everybody wants to talk to him. They were all calling him Rex. You know, poor guy, he didn't know what was going on. So, but you know, taking him every day, taking him to the dog park, play with other dogs, he'll get used to it. But that's about it, folks. I'm not going to take any more of your time. I hope anything I said made sense. If it doesn't make sense, then too bad. Because uh, you guys know I don't work off the script, so I miss some things and say some things wrong that I didn't mean to, but it's part of my charm. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but yeah, I'm going to... Like I said, I'm going to head out Wednesday to talk to the electric guy. I'll be shooting some video out there. I'll let you know what's going on with that. Saturday. Well, Friday, I'm going to go buy the last of the two bites I need. Because I'll get paid from here. Yeah, you know, I have to take off Wednesday, but I told Nick, I'm working Thursday night. I need that money so I can buy the rest of the two bites. So I can't miss the night's work. Uh, but, yeah, that'll buy the rest of the two bites I need. And Gary, Gary is going to come out this weekend, and we're going to knock out the rest of those sections. And it'll all be live streamed. You can hear us in our natural environment, bantering back and forth as we do this. But we have to make six of them. It takes about, probably, in reality, 20 minutes to do one. <laughs> we take 45 minutes, but we'll get them all done. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. How are you? Great. May not quite take that. I'll try to get it. Fifteen? Yeah. I'll put it on there. Uh, and if it doesn't take all of it, I'll go ahead and keep the rest. I don't want you to have to walk back in there. Okay. You got it, bud. All right. All right. It may not take fifteen. Damn. There's some people who don't want their gas gauge to get below three quarters of a tank. Uh, anyway, that's about all I can say. I'm going to try to get this video edited. Get my Monday night video uploaded for y'all. Remember, I got a review of that 14 inch 40 volt saw. It's going live tomorrow at 9 o'clock. So watch it, like it, comment on so these people think I did a good job. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll give me one of their battery-operated weed eaters uh, to do a review on next. Oh, well. Anyway, I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Be careful. Enjoy life. Stay positive. Don't let all this crap I talk about get you down because it doesn't get me down. I try to find humor in it. And once in a while, there's some positivity to be gotten from it as well. That's what we got to work on, folks. But this is Joe here at the gas station. I'm out.